Hello and welcome to The Gaggle. We'll be challenging, if necessary, to destroy media narratives. I'm George Sandy Levy. With me today, of course, is Buddy, uh, co-founder of The Gaggle, and he's brought along his colleague, uh, Peter Lavelle, uh, to help him. Um, so, uh, Peter, um, the other day, Kamala Harris, who is listed as the vice president of the United States, she may actually be the president, but she's listed as vice president in her job description, has finally come out with a whole bunch of documents um, outlining her strategy to address the root causes of uh, the immigration. Uh, you would have thought the root causes were uh, essentially you know, borders uh, that aren't being enforced, immigration laws that aren't being enforced, uh, the constant uh, promise of uh, amnesty for all the illegals in the United States. Um, and essentially, the one, once you're in, you know, the United States is a pretty, pretty good place. So, so you know, good, good place where you can make money, get free education, free health care, and so on. So you would have thought those may be the root causes. No, apparently the root causes lie in uh, the heart of Central America. And so um, she's come out, there's a, you know, a, lot, a lot of material here, but uh, she um, talks here about um, uh, this root causes strategy. And he says the implementation of the strategy will rely on the expertise of a wide range of US departments and agencies with support from governments in and outside the region, uh, civil society, the private sector, multilateral organizations, international financial institutions, and the US Congress. These partnerships will bolster the impact of the strategy through informing programmatic interventions, leveraging political will, and mobilizing necessary resources. And so there are five pillars for this strategy. Pillar one, addressing economic insecurity and inequality. Pillar two, combating corruption, strengthening democratic governments and advancing the rule of law. Pillar three, promoting respect for human rights, labor rights and free press. Pillar four, countering and preventing violence, extortion and other crimes perpetrated by criminal gangs, trafficking networks and other organized criminal organizations. Pillar five, combating sexual, gender-based, and domestic violence. Um, and the vice president has already taken action. What, I, I, what troubles me is that where's pillar six, the um, climate change. I mean, they, you know, I, I don't see climate change anywhere. And it's I'm, volume two, volume two, it's coming. Volume two, I'm also worried about the, uh, well, I guess, you know, you know I mean, it is, uh, right, so the, the climate change, which is a big um, uh, thing. So. That's um, the, her, her root causes. Now, when, when you read all through all that, that just doesn't seem to be any kind of a strategy. It's just simply a potpourri of every single problem under the sun, uh, which will take generations, centuries to address. I mean, how, how are you gonna deal with all corruption and you know, uh, gender-based violence and what, what not? Um, What's striking here is that in, in nothing that the administration has outlined, is there anything about enforcement of America's immigration laws, which is, you know, you basically, you can't come into the country illegally. And if you come into the country illegally, you are deported. Uh, and so, and <laughs> therefore, um, you know, in, particularly as right now, the, the, uh, the Biden administration is, is colluding with the Democrats to insert an amnesty into the uh, budget uh, reconciliation bill. You know, amnesty for 11, 20, 30, 40 million, who knows? No, no one knows okay. how many illegals there are in the United States. So people who are coming from Central America, and of course they're coming from elsewhere, are making a perfectly rational decision. We don't have to go into all of these, you know, stuff about corruption and so on. They're saying, hey, I come in, if I come in illegally, I'm probably going to get an amnesty uh, either this time or a couple of years down the road. In the meantime, I can I can have a, a good time. I get help, free healthcare, free education. You know, get a job. You can work off the books without too much trouble. There's no enforcement of um, labor laws in the United States about hiring illegals. Um, why wouldn't people come? So you know, they, so everything this in this root cause of strategy is just a massive irrelevance. Uh, entirely befitting this uh, administration. All right, Peter, what's your take? Well, when you were reading uh, the pillars there, 
I'm sorry, um, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but it sounded like one of those gas bags from NATO wrote it. Yes, you know? it did, that sound like that, yes, yes. And yes. all of those pillars, Madam Vice President, why don't you, all of the issues in your pillars, why don't you deal with that within the United States, okay? That might be a good start, okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Um, Madam Vice President, I think you forgot, maybe we, you know, we really got to go to the deep roots here. I think we need, need to go to Madrid. We need to go to Madrid and look at the origins of the colonization of the Western Hemisphere. We're going to have our Portuguese right. uh, colleagues in NATO, by the way, they right. could help us with the root causes right. too. Yeah. Okay? Definitely, yes, yes. And right. then speeding up a little bit closer to the president, um, why, why don't we reassess um, the war on drugs, okay? So maybe we could find out where the corruption came from, the lack of rule of law, all of these things here, okay? Right. Of course, we had nothing to do with it. Right. Okay. No. Of course, it, it, yeah. All right, go ahead. It, it's very simple, everyone. If you want to have an immigration policy, you have to have a border, and you have to have a border that is enforced, and you and that border needs to be enforced by uh, laws on the books. Okay. At the end of the day. When Biden came into office, the situation was pretty good. Right. Okay, right. 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 this is a this is a sea change. Okay, it's not something that crept up on us. You just opened the floodgates. That's right. That, 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 that's it. That's it. So you're basically getting uh, uh, under the way that the uh, Biden administration has been running immigration policy, probably about you know could be something in the order of two million illegals in twelve months. It is a stunning number. I mean, it's just two million, uh, just, you know, illegally coming in. But this was a policy that was always in the works. And remember, you know, this is what they promised during the primaries, that they were going to abandon the whole Trumpian policy. Uh, essentially, they're going to open the border. Yeah, come in, you know, you know, we'll have this, you know, very relaxed asylum policies. Uh, no more turning people away, no more turning families away, no more turning children away, yeah, come on in. And then, you know, now no, no more turning away people because they've got infectious diseases. Come on, come right in. Well, that's what you got. Of course, you're going to get a floodgate uh, on that. And, you know, when you have the corruption, yeah, the corruption is because, you know, there's a massive uh, organizations facilitating uh, this. They work, these, these, these drug cartels are working inside of the United States, That's right. That's inside. Right, right. So I mean, we, we, we have troops, we have troops in Syria and Georgia. Right. What, I don't know what they're doing there exactly, right. but um, why, why don't we have those troops come and, you know, watch our border, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, yeah, watch the border. And basically, you know, the, the principle is, you can't come in. I mean, like, you know, if you have an asylum request, you make your asylum request in your country of origin, or you go to the first country. First country. Come to, which is, and, that, and, and that's the thing. You can't just say, well, I don't really like Guatemala because, you know, I, you know it's a little hot here. And, uh, and you know, there's quite high crime rate. Not enough avocados. <laughs> now, Mexico, you know, the, the, the cuisine doesn't quite agree with me. You know, I don't like jalapenos. So I, I think I prefer to go to the United States. Mex. <laughs> yeah. no, not, not my thing. I mean, you well, can't you, do it. You can't pick and choose. You bring up such an important point, George, is that if you look at the Democratic primary, you know, we could go back, you know, asylum, asylum, asylum seekers, you know, that's dropped out of the discourse completely. Right. Do you hear that now? Right. Yeah. Not, I mean, even on Fox that actually covers the border, they, they don't even, they, that's, you know, that is so low on the list, okay, that they don't even mention it anymore. So there's no pretense to it anymore. Right. And, and also, this, this unwillingness to admit that there is Okay, you don't like the word crisis, you don't like the word invasion, but it is a an issue for local communities where it's happening. And the way they're moving people around the country using the US military is that it's no longer a border problem, it's your town's problem now in the interior. Right. That's right. And nobody voted for this. Nobody. Folks. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're moving them uh, within the country. So people who, uh, who have the diseases, so they, you know, again, you know, we talked earlier about uh, the COVID. So they're, therefore they're moving people in the country who are carrying uh, the virus around in the country. And, uh, and, and this is not what people want. And uh, they just say, you know, well, you just have to take it. Um, you know, it, it is an you know, absolutely shocking uh, position. And, it, and what you've always had with immigration, you have an alliance between the sort of the woke uh, left, uh, the sort of AOC types, and the horrible uh, woke billionaires, the Jeff Bezos types. Who and and the Chamber of Commerce. Yes, exactly. That's what I mean. Chamber of Commerce, the Jeff Bezos billionaires. Because how, how does, you know, you know who, who's going to pack all those uh, goods in those horrible warehouses of uh, Jeff Bezos? Illegals, and so you know any attempt to enforce, uh, you know, labor laws, which is employers are not supposed to hire um, illegals, it always falls apart. It never, never succeeds uh, because you know, again the Chamber of Commerce resisted. You know that e-verify and all those things that have been proposed uh, that they won't hire illegals. You know, boom, those are always destroyed. So that's it. You've got this the coalition, which I guess. It is the Democratic Party coalition now. It's, it's uh, the AOC and Kamala Harris, uh, along with uh, Jeff Bezos and uh, Mark Zuckerberg. That, that's that's their uh, coalition. Uh, the, you know, the, re the rest of the country, you know, you know, you can just go to hell. But where are the Republicans, George? Where are they? Very good question. Where are they? Yep. Because you know, again, you know. They can talk about, you know, the sanctity of borders and all of that. But, you know, there, see, this is why I mentioned specifically the Chamber of Commerce, because there's a tug of war, okay? Because it's it's flipped to the Democrat side. The Republicans are not, a lot of Republicans that are interested in the Chamber of Commerce are not happy about that, okay? Right, right. And so that's why, the, you know, the, the Republicans are the, the worst windbags on all of this here. Where are their proposals? You know, I mean, and are they going to run on it in 2022? And how will they run on it? I mean, I was watching, um, Tucker Carlson uh, has a new uh, documentary on it. It's called um, um, Border Invasion, I think it's something like that. It's on his new platform. And he was on The Five with, uh, uh, with on Fox and Geraldo Rivera was there. Of course, everyone knows he's a big open borders guy. And he just, again, go, goes to the emotion. These yep. are good people. These are kind people. They're, they're escaping um, a, a tragedy. And Tucker, you know, go on YouTube and, and watch it. And he just pushed back. You know, he's, you know, this is not, this is not just emotion. This is about policy and it affects every, everyday people. And you can call me what you want, but you got to take care of your own people first. And what happened to the asylum issue? Right, right, yeah. But, that, you know, but, but exactly. Well, the asylum, you said the asylum issue worked against, works against them because, of course, Trump did address the asylum issue. He just said, basically, you're not going to, <laughs> you're not going to let it sit in the United States uh, and let's say you apply for asylum and then you just kind of disappear into the country and then no one ever hears about you again. So he said, no, you want to make an uh, application for asylum, you do it in your country of origin or, or you wait in Mexico for your, uh, <laughs> for while the, your asylum is, request is being processed. That addressed the problem. And, and it was something that actually did work because the Central American countries were actually happy. They, they're not happy about losing people. They, you know, they, they, they're not happy that the United States essentially is just sucking up uh, people from their countries. I mean, you know, they need, they need the workers themselves. You know, it's no good if America is just sucking uh, this labor up. And Mexico doesn't like it, but it's actually uh, taken over by these cartels, um, this coyotes, you know, transporting uh, migrants to the border. Uh, so they say, yeah, this is good. America's actually, you know, once America brings its own border under control, it helps Central America no end. Now, yeah. you know, that's why this, the uh, the Mexican president hates Biden, you know, this uh, Obrador, uh, uh, Obrador. He hates him. I mean, because you had a, he had a cooperative relationship with Trump, and now that's gone. When you, when you have an open border like this, it distorts everything right. in Central America. Everything right. is distorted right. because... Uh, um, it, when you think of the the um, the energy, even courage, I would say, of people to make that trek. I mean, right. don't you want people with that kind of fortitude to stay and build your right. own country? Right. Okay, and, and then you and then you, what you have is that you have a, these countries that are just their budgets. I mean, I, I I think it's Honduras. I'm not sure. I think it's Honduras. They don't even have health care. 
because remittances take care of it. You got to make sure your uncle and aunt can take care of you, right. you know, in America, because that's going to be your health care. Right. But of course, remittances that, themselves. That is the, those are the distortions that it's creating. Okay. Once you seal that border and make it the terms and conditions of getting um, through it legally, then it will create, it will, un, it'll start alleviating the distortions that it creates. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the the there's a demand problem there's a demand issue for drugs okay that help that's distorting those countries as well in the united states you we have to address the issue of, of drugs uh, of dependency of addiction uh, we have to address those issues you know you, they, they they people just don't okay um for reasons that are really a mystery to me of these how many how many people die of drug overdoses and how many people have, have died of COVID? Okay, right. I mean we're looking at large numbers here. No, that, that, that's right. Um, but of course, remittances themselves uh, are very bad for the United States. Again, we just another reflection that you know immigration is not such a great thing for the United States because you know a worker who sends money home uh, is basically not spending the money in, in the local economy. So it's money that's actually being leaving the United States. Again, the sucking sound, money actually leaving the United States. So it's not doing anything uh, to advance uh, economic growth um, uh, either here at home. But the other thing is also interesting, uh, you know, when you look at um, Harris's um, proposal, it is a massive uh, kind of an imperial intervention in the internal affairs of uh, Central America. It's like, this is our excuse. Our excuse is we want to address the root problems. We're not actually going to do anything about it, but we can run your countries for you because we love running your countries. It's like Ukraine. We love running Ukraine because we can get you know, lots of money for us. We're not actually doing anything good for you, but you know we, we get all of our agencies and all the private sectors and all the NGOs running your country for you. And <laughs> so and plus, Hunter needs another gig. Okay, no, I don't think his art thing's going to work. Okay, no, no, no. I mean he. I mean, you know, since he doesn't have any experience in anything, then he's qualified for everything. So maybe he could run Honduras for a couple years. I think so. Maybe he also needs some artistic inspiration. You know, you had all these artists used to go to Mexico. You know, they get you know inspiration. And then, and then all of these uh, woke graduates that are are completely useless to society. They could go down and work on diversity in El Salvador. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. They've got because everything, you know, all that waffle that, that's in those documents, it, it, it's all sounds, you know, we're just going to push all of our bureaucrats and all of our NGOs and all, you know, <laughs> all the people who are peddling all this nonsense. We're going to just inflict them on you and they're going to run your countries, you know, with all their diversity and gender based uh, violence and gender based quotas and. And then and making sure there isn't, a, you know, discrimination against sexual minorities and transgender toilets and whatnot and whatnot. That's what we're going to do for you. Imagine that, and that's going to solve your immigration problem. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> when will America stop helping exactly. Central America? Please, please stop helping. <laughs> It's, it's, but this is part of that empire mentality, you know, right. if they just become like us, everything will be great. That's right. But, I, you know, I, 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 yes. but, but when the, inside the country half, but we don't really like half of the of our own countrymen. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but imagine these poor countries, you know, they're going to get this. This is what's going to be inflicted on them. You know, like, like, like AOC uh, night and day, you know, like, you know, all, all AOC all the time, you know, and the Harris all the time. It's like, it's like a, a nightmare, you know, you think of this, like, this, this is the America that you're going to have uh, rammed down your throat. Ah, it's, it's, a, it's actually quite brutal. I mean, actually. You know. Well, these are some of the most conservative populations right. in the world. Yeah, yeah, it's true. That's true. Okay. I mean, you, you, uh, what do you think the AOC's their attitude towards the Catholic Church, for example, is? Oh, gotta right. go. Gotta go. That's exactly. Yeah. That, that, that's right. A AOC should start lecturing them about um, gay marriage and you know abortion. You know, even after birth. And so yeah, that that that's really what they want. You know, you'll have a captive audience who wants to listen to all of that. So Kamala Harris with her you know, her, her, her pillars, you know, the origins problem here. Um, it is, it's, it's more than just pathetic. Okay. Um, there's only one question you have reading that gibberish. 
Is the border even mentioned? No, no, that's the whole point. The border is not mentioned. So in other words, the very, the very issue that you're supposed to be addressing, the immigration crisis, is not even you know, addressed exactly the border enforcement of <laughs> immigration laws. No, 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 let's just, let's just uh, run uh, the affairs of other nations, you know, because we know so much better about them what to do. Uh, well, the, and, then, the, and let's, you know, just parrot all these buzzwords that uh, we love to parrot, um, and that's it. But the actual problem, nothing, that, 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 that isn't even mentioned. Remember everybody, the people that propose this kind of nonsense gibberish, it never affects them. No. They have their private security, gated communities, they work at home, yeah. they're in the financial sector, they're in marketing, right. okay? When things get a little tough, they go to the Hamptons to kind of relax, you know, a little wine in the shower, right, you, know, yeah. these and they have, you know. And, and the good thing, is, you know, they have a, a, the cheap gardener from you know, Guatemala, and then you've got the, um, uh, the pool boy, maybe he's from Mali or, you know, Mozambique. Uh, and then, you know, you've got somebody, the, the delivery uh, boy, I mean, who's going to bring you your, um, the, the, your, the, your groceries, you know. Who knows where he's, maybe he's from Botswana. Um, you don't care. I mean, these are colorful people. You know, they just, you know, show up at your door and deliver and then they disappear, you know, wherever, wherever it is that they live. So <laughs> very nice life. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Right. It works for everybody. Everyone's a winner. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> and they don't have to be vaccined. Wow. No, no. Very, very nice. Yes. You know, when they were crossing the border, there were some reports, you know, got a new iPhone. Boom, new iPhone for you. Okay. <laughs> the perks, there's their, their perks there. All right, everybody. Uh, George and I got to keep an eye on this. This is a big story. The video we did before about the con convoluted politics of COVID, we did that today and this one here. We're going to keep an eye on both of them. And yeah, of course, absolutely. Congress is going to go into recess. Uh, Nancy Pelosi can take her clown show uh, January 6th with her, but that'll be back. So um, uh, we're on uh, Locals. Go to the gaggle.locals.com. George and I are doing one on one bit, um, uh, Zoom uh, chats with gagglers. The store is up. Um, George, uh, we, oh, George and I have done our first Q&A. Q&A, we'll be doing one, another one very shortly. Very uh, shortly, great question. Uh, you George know. has already done one live. He's, uh, stay tuned. Okay. okay, hopefully you'll see another this. One, another, one, yeah, another one today. So that, that, that should be a lot of fun. Um, and, and ding, 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 the, uh, the tip jar, you know, always uh, needs to fill. As Peter likes to say, it doesn't fill itself. Um, so, and, you know, and, and Buddy, look, you know, he, he's falling asleep because he's already helped himself to whatever was there. So it uh, needs to be refilled. At least he licks it clean. He does lick, he does lick it clean, yeah. Yes, that's true. <laughs> no one else can use it, but he licks it. Finger licking good. <laughs> so, yeah, so please, you know, anything you can do to help us so would be most appreciated. Uh, you know, we don't have billionaires. Um, we, we only have Buddy. So, um, yeah. so but remember, if you like the gaggle, please like, share, and subscribe. See you soon. Bye.